I promised, and now I'm going to deliver. This is um, new for me. Uh, you're going to see the moment of discovery. Uh, this is this comes from my last podcast. If you haven't heard it, highly recommend you listening. It's not a jaded recommendation at all. Uh, you can just uh, go to the website, go to ghostwalks.com, and um, uh, at the, on the main page, you'll see the last podcast. It's linked from there. But uh, on the podcast, I did a search for haunted places to stay because I was really interested to see what would come up and uh, what it would feature because that's that was the subject of the podcast. And I was interested because I, I typed in ignore that I, I typed in uh, haunted places and in Google, uh, I don't know if you know, it actually recommends different types of search terms. And there was only one search term that came up. And I'm thinking that haunted places to stay is a huge, huge thing. I, I can't be the only one to, to do the search. So I, I put it in here. I'll show you. Um, sorry, I already loaded it. But uh, let me go back to the main Google page here. So haunted. See that? This is because I searched other things before. Uh, but right there at the very top, haunted places to stay in Williamsburg, Virginia, which was strange for me because I haven't heard of Williamsburg, Virginia. I have never stayed there personally. So um, this is a moment of discovery. And I thought I'd uh, invite you along for the ride. So let's have a look. Williamsburg, Virginia. And if you stayed there personally, uh, please throw in the comments below any experiences you had, uh, why Google consider it, considers it the top of the top when it comes to haunted places to uh, to, to visit. So uh, I'm stop my confusion a little bit. Oh, there's actually a haunted Williamsburg. Good old TripAdvisor coming in. So that's interesting. So TripAdvisor, because they don't say that about Niagara on the lake, haunted Williamsburg. You know, that's what I should be searching for. Let's uh, change this up. Haunted Williamsburg. See what comes up. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it's a town. Extreme Ghosts of Williamsburg, Williamsburg Ghost Tour, Taste of Williamsburg. It's a non-ghost related thing. Very small. So what is this, like a ghost center? A town founded? Now I actually visited um, Palmyra, New York. And here, I'll pull that up so you can have a look at it. Palmyra. And this was this was similar, so maybe this is where they got the idea. I wondered. I was very um, interested in Palmyra because what they had done is they had taken a historic region, a historic area, and they um, turned it into like a ghost center, so you could actually come and do investigations, investigations uh, of different buildings. So uh, yeah, different. Uh, you had the house. You had um, a post office, um, sorry, I read here, museum, Erie, uh, Erie Canal Depot, print shop, general store, and um, another museum. So it was different historic buildings that they had turned into this little uh, little ghost neighborhood. So I wonder if that's what uh, Williamsburg is. So there's just a tour company. Oh, it's not... Uh, I'm so used to seeing some of these uh, tour tickets are, you know, $30, $40, and um, I don't agree with that, I, especially if you're not really offering anything unique, if it's just an outdoor tour that, anyway, I'm not I'm not getting political here, I'm just, uh, making, but this looks good, I like, uh, they almost make it look like movie scenes, oh, that, that fella is wonderful. Very cool. Yeah, no, I'm liking it. I would think you'd have to offer something um, something different if you're in an area that has 
uh, that much competition. So I, I, I like that. I think that's uh, wonderful. Anyway, I'm getting past my original points. So why Haunted Williamsburg? Is this the tour again? So not worth the money. Decent time. That's not good. Okay, yeah, there's different uh, different tours there. Three most haunted buildings in Williamsburg. <laughs> That's adorable. Public hospital, Wren building, Payne Randolph house. So is it just because so it has history and it has ghost stories? Is it just because that there's multiple ghost tours, so they kind of embraced it? Because maybe Williamsburg doesn't have a um, huge tourism industry, so you kind of you kind of see this uh, pop up, and then you know the, the extra ghost stories are coming out from the buildings. Uh, Savannah is a good explanation of it. Savannah has an amazing history behind it as well, which I'm assuming Williamsburg does too. Um, I won't get too far into that. So you have like uh, different buildings that have these amazing ghost stories. And if you have um, confined space of it, I, I can see it using it as a, a tourist. Like, for example, a large uh, abandoned building like Mansfield Reformatory or Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, you're not just offering one house. It's this massive structure and there is tourism value in that. So I can see... Oh, here we go. I can see um, taking advantage of that. Yeah, I got to see that in a second. Okay, so if you if you want to, Virginia is for lovers um, website. Just do a search, uh, virginia.org, uh, Haunted Williamsburg, and then you can see. I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but you can go through, and this looks like a good list of the buildings. So this could give you a little more information of some of the haunted places. Maybe not the Ice Pavilion, but the other ones. The original Extreme Ghosts of Williamsburg and the original Ghosts of Williamsburg. I, I assume it's the same thing. Oh no, it's different addresses. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not doing that. This one looks interesting. I'll look at that. I'll look at the courthouse. And sure, why not a tavern? Uh, oh, that's Palmyra. Whoops. Extreme Ghosts of Williamsburg. What makes them extreme? That's my question. There was this show. I say reasonably priced. There was this show on um, on TV. It was a there was it was a show on TV called Extreme Paranormal, and I absolutely loved it. It only lasted a few episodes, unfortunately, but it was these three guys stream fellas who would go into haunted places if you haven't seen it there should be clips on youtube and it was the alpha the middle guy who always questioned everything and then the poor <laughs> beta fella <laughs> and I remember the, the alpha was like uh, there was one scene where um, supposedly the ghost story is that a person was buried alive and that's the reason why they were haunting this place and here's the extreme part so he <laughs> He turns to the, the poor beta fellow. He's like, I, I, I don't know about this, guys. I'm, I'm very scared. And he's like, no, 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 no. The only way we can make the ghost appear is if we bury you. <laughs> and, I like, and I was like, this show's a winner. This show is a winner. But unfortunately, it didn't, uh, it didn't last. I, I was the only one who, who loved it. <laughs> All right. Why is it so extreme? Come on, Internet. I have faith in you. Wow, they got uh, the domain is theghosttour.com. Virginia's oldest ghost tour. Second oldest in the United States. Oh, so they do they do a bunch of different ones. Seem to be based out of Williamsburg. Here's the extreme one. That's That's what I'm curious about. Hey, I clicked on extreme. What's going on? Oh, there it is. 
Uh, want to use real ghost hunting equipment. Okay, that's... Uh, ghost guys will lead you through a two-hour tour. Oh, it's extreme, I assume, because of the equipment. Interesting idea. Not sure I would do that, but... Uh, you know, I'm more, more about the stories, not... There's this hunts. I've, I've hosted hunts, like at the Cambridge Post Office, and that, yeah, focusing uh, squarely on the tools and communication, not... Well, there's stories, but it's not fully mixed. River Cruise, that's cool. Yeah, I like it. Anyway, I was making fun. I take it back. George Wythe House. Uh, Palace Green belonged to George Wythe. Oh, pronounced with. George With, I stand corrected. Leader of the Patriot Movement in Virginia. A delegate to the Continental Congress. Virginia's first signer. Oh, Declaration of Independence. That's cool. Uh, served as General George Washington's headquarters just before the British siege of Yorktown. That's a really deep history here. And maybe that's like, I, I could see that. Uh, House accommodated the Assembly... Thomas Jefferson and his family. So I can see a, the town that has such a deep history. Um, yeah, it's part of the tourism, but mixing in the ghost aspect, if you have a lot of great stories, it's kind of like a win-win. It's kind of like a perfect storm. Ghost history, Williamsburg. And... Um, the history is unique, so why not make the ghosts unique? Because the ghosts, I mean, if say it has some infamous ghosts as well, or some famous historic figures like George Washington was said to be haunting a place. James City County Courthouse. One of the most sophisticated uh, court buildings was recently undergone a scholarly restoration by the Carnal Williamsburg Foundation. Um, I'm interested. That doesn't look like the same building. Oh, this is the back, I assume. No, that's not the building. This is why I should uh, probably prep some of this stuff. But I wanted I wanted you to be surprised. Along with me, you'd be surprised. Okay, let's just count it. Oh, it might be the building. It just looked different. Was this on the top? No, no, that's a different building. Huh. Anyway. King's Arms. I wonder where it gets his name. I assume they mean arms as in military. I'm not thinking that there's a uh, a glass case in there that has two severed arms in there saying it belonged to a king. That's just me. Southern Comfort at its finest, uh, opened in 1772. Wow, that's old. Uh, became one of the uh, town's most genteel establishments. Where the best people resorted. Yeah, nothing in the way of ghosts. But I'm not going to go down that road. Let's let's just end it uh, with this. I will um, do a quick search. I'm just curious um, how far away, because I know it says Virginia, how far it is from Washington. Washington, D.C. Oh my goodness. Well, that's walking. <laughs> not walking. <laughs> it's, like, okay, it's not too bad. <laughs> Two and a half hours drive from Washington. Um, Gettysburg is another one. So if you wanted to do a haunted trip, there you go. Gettysburg and then Charleston. And then Savannah, Savannah. Look at that. I just I just did this, and uh, you know what? Have a little uh, have a little layover in in Baltimore. 
all to more. I know you're probably saying, why, Daniel? Why would I, why would I ever want to go to Baltimore? I have a reason. Uh, Gettysburg and then Baltimore. Okay. So I have a reason. Uh, I go to Baltimore in relation to Edgar Allan Poe. You can visit the um, pub that he supposedly haunts. The, um, oh, uh, Baltimore pub Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, the horse you came in on saloon. And, uh, you know, you immerse yourself in a Poe history. Yeah, I'm sure there is a Edgar Allan Poe tour. There's a museum. I think I'm slowly talking myself into going. Ah, COVID-19. I think this house was related to him somehow. It's a house he lived in or something. Yeah, he lived here with his aunt, grandmother, and two cousins. I assume it's uh, not the one he married. Or maybe one of them was. So yeah, immerse yourself in Edgar Allan Poe history and go to that pub and have a drink. That would be an amazing story to tell. That is a comment related to my podcast. So here we go. I can take a screenshot of this, and I just uh, created a haunted road trip if you guys are interested in that, all places I personally want to go. I've been to Washington. I've been to Gettysburg. Have not been to Baltimore. Haven't been to Williamsburg, Charleston, or Savannah. And uh, that's, I think that's pretty much all the haunted. Oh, Roanoke. I believe that's the same Roanoke where the infamous disappearance happened with some, some uh, pioneers way back in the day. But uh, yeah, I'll leave that up to you. So, Haunted Williamsburg. Who knew? I am uh, pleasantly surprised that uh, this place seems to be a center of haunted tourism. So, like you have the abandoned buildings, the Mansfield Reformatories and Trans-Allegheny Asylums of the world. You have these small little neighborhoods and towns popping up with the haunted tourism, which, don't get me wrong, I am 100% in support with.